In this video, sponsored by ASUS, we're gonna be checking out and unboxing gaming on the ROG Swift PG329. This thing ticks a lot of boxes. It's 32 inches, 1440p, HDR 600. It's got G-Sync. It runs at 175 hertz. Well, that's it, that, there, there's nothing else, but come on. Do you really need more than that? No, I lied, I lied. So it's got an IPS technology display and quantum dot. So what I expect from this, and I will accept nothing less, is absolutely zero compromises. Got some feet on here that are strong enough to kill a man. Look at that. You know how some viewers get upset about me abusing the hardware? Think of it this way. If I didn't abuse it, how would you know that it can stand up to abuse? Crazy how efficient monitors are getting. I mean, it used to be you had a 32 inch monitor. You had this like ginormous power brick. Mind you, this is a 150 watt power brick. Holy shikes. What are we gonna find in this box? Stickers, manual, cables. Dang, check out these nuts. You know, man, I remember going to the like university campus uh, computer store and seeing for the first time in my life, the original Apple 30 inch cinema display. You remember that thing, David? And being like, wow, if only someday I could afford a display that beautiful. And now the craziest thing about this thing is not only is it a high, like 160% sRGB. So it's a wide gamut, high resolution, 2560 by 1440. So that's a very similar density to that old Apple cinema display. Not only that, it only costs like 700 US dollars. And yes, 700 US dollars, a lot of money. That's a lot of money. But to put it in perspective, Back around that time, I bought a Dell 2005 FPW, okay? That was around $700. It was a 24 inch. It was like this thick. Per Asus as usual, they've got nipple joystick navigation back here, along with a handful of shortcut buttons and power button. They've got RGB built into the logo. Back here, we got a built-in USB hub, headphone jack, display port, dual HDMI, but it should be noted, these are not HDMI 2.1. Although because the panel is 1440p rather than 4K, that may not actually end up being an issue. You know, we're gonna have to hook up an HDMI cable and see how high we can go on an HDMI 2.0 connection. Did I mention already this thing is VESA 600 HDR certified? Cool, well it is. Oh, it also has both G-Sync and ASUS's ELMB Sync. So that's their ultra low motion blur strobing dude out of jig. It's got height, so that's good. Side to side, yep, and tilt, but no swivel. All right, all right. Fair enough, ASUS, I get it, something's gotta give. Overclocking uh, on, maximum refresh rate, gonna turn that up to 175. Shadow boost is off. So if you're up all about bringing up the shadows and you know someone's crouching under a bridge or in CSGO or whatever, they've got uh, everything from level one to three to dynamic adjustment. One concern I have about this thing is I've always found the sweet spot for 1440 is around the 27 inch range. That's where you pretty much can't tell unless you're getting really close to it. Oh yeah, this is noticeable. It's not bad. It's not like, ew, that's gross. Everything's blurry. But if you're the kind of person who's eagle-eyed and really wants your text to look as sharp as possible, then you'd probably want to pay the extra for a 4K version. And then the extra for a GPU that can power the 4K version. And then think, actually, you know what? Maybe if I'm an actual gamer and I don't spend all of my time on LTTstore.com, maybe I'd be okay with it exactly the way it is, because that's an awful lot of extra money to spend. Let's fire up Doom Eternal. <laughs> well, what? It's so much more expensive. I'm serious. Like this is 1440p, HDR 600, 175 hertz. Like that's a lot of gaming for 700 bucks. And it's all about trade-offs, right? Like it's not like I'm gonna be looking, okay, well, let's see, let's see. But I'm not expecting that I'm gonna be looking at an actual game going, gee, uh, well, I can see the pixels. <laughs> this game runs at 640 by 480 by default for some reason, let me get that fixed for you. And of course, because we're only running at 1440p, crank this puppy up to Ultra Nightmare. So then real talk, David, at a reasonable distance, do you see any pixels? Oh, hmm. certainly no pixels. I can sort of make out a bit of stair-stepping around the helmet, sort of. 
It's not bad though. It's nothing a little bit of anti-aliasing can't fix. Like that's what's great for me about 14 I mean, we did a whole video away a while back. It, this is not like this is a new stance on this issue for me. Uh, we did a whole video about how you're just better off having a 1440p display, and if it's not sharp enough, you can throw AA at the problem, you can throw super sampling at the problem, but at least you're running native resolution at a, at a reasonable sort of GPU load. So we've got HDR enabled in this game. As with all HDR 400 and HDR 600 displays, I would say the HDR experience is not especially game-changing. You really want to step up to something like one of ASUS's HDR 1000 tier monitors if you want like a, a really mind-blowing HDR experience. But I would still say that it adds more than it detracts for sure. Like you can see those, those uh, ammo icons and stuff like that really do glow bright. Same thing with explosions. It's just not, a, it's, it's not stunning or anything like that. In terms of smoothness, I continue to think that 100 and mid hertz is kind of what most people are gonna see the most benefit from. So this is a really good middle ground. Resolution, refresh rate, and of course, well, cost is a big factor in a product like this one. Like, do you notice any stair-stepping as I'm running around here, David? Oh, definitely not. Yeah, I, I, really, I just don't think 4K is necessary for gaming. It's cool. And like, if I'm sitting this close to it, yeah, I can, I can see it. But it's not necessary. I'm not saying that, like, you know, better effects and lighting and higher refresh rate aren't necessary. I'm just saying, if I have a fixed amount of horsepower, I want to invest it in other things rather than 4K. That's all. Little bit of blue discoloration on the leading edge, little bit of yellow discoloration on the trailing edge. So there's definitely a little bit of motion blur. Man, it's not bad though. <laughs> it took us a second to get ELMB enabled because while you can have it on at the same time as HDR, you can't have it on at the same time as the variable backlight local dimming nonsense. So uh, that makes sense. For those not familiar, this technology actually strobes the backlight. You can't see it to your eye, but the camera can probably see the strobing, can it? Yeah, so what it's doing is it's strobing the backlight in between pixel refreshes, so you don't see that blurry in between phase as much. You just see those, those sharp finished stages at each refresh. It's cool that you can have it on at the same time as G-Sync on this model. Like if you track with your eyes, if you track the grate, for example, those look Damn clear, are you, are you trying it? Obviously, I'm gonna wait for folks like Blurbusters or Artings to check it out and validate exactly how low motion blur this is, but to a pleb like me to the eye, dang, it's looking pretty good. And if you guys wanna check it out, we're gonna have it linked down in the video description. Make sure you're subscribed to Short Circuit so you see more videos like this. Thank you for watching. And thank you, Asus, again, for sponsoring our first look here at the PG329. 1440p, what a nice middle ground.